Hey YouTube, BR Tickle 55 here. And what you're seeing is my uh, TV hooked up to my Linux Mint 16 home media server that I talked about in a different video. And uh, this is kind of this is, this video's introduction kind of show you what the finished product looks like uh, with your uh, video collection uh, with your video collection loaded up and everything. Uh, and as you can see, I'm using my tablet as a remote control. Let's start that movie. mute so you can hear me talk. So, and to kind of show you, uh, kind of show you the basic setup. That Acer netbook right there, that's the home media server. Uh, this external USB drive is uh, is where the is where the media actually resides. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you how to set all that up and uh, we'll move on to that in the next part of this video. Okay, before we get Stand started by. on this you might be asking yourself uh, why don't I just do this with my existing Windows installation and you'd have a valid point there because one thing that Windows is pretty good at is making uh, file sharing extremely easy. The flip side of that is on the use case that I'm showing you here, repurposing an old netbook. Most netbooks, if they came out with Windows, either came out with Windows 7 Starter or some of the higher end ones came out with Windows 7 Home Premium. And it was pretty cheap. I mean, I did it. My netbook came with a Windows 7 starter, and I think it cost me 70. I think it cost yeah about 70 dollars to upgrade it to Home Premium, which I did, and, and that's fine for use as a netbook. The problem is with using it as a home media server. When you're talking about something with a 1.4 gigahertz Atom processor. Uh, a gig of RAM, Windows plus all the stuff that you need to run to keep Windows secure like your antivirus, uh, uh, your privacy software, all that stuff provides overhead that's going to decrease its performance as a media server. So and with, with using Linux Mint, particularly 32-bit Linux Mint uh, XFCE, the operating system itself provides very little overhead, so you get a perform you get a performance boost uh, by using Linux as opposed to Windows. Also, when you're talking uh, when you're setting this up as sort of a home server environment, one of the things that you're that you're going to want to be able to do is remotely. Uh, administrate the thing. You're going to want to be able to get in there from another computer, probably a Windows computer that's also on your home network and be able to remote in in there and uh, and perform administrative tasks that come up like uploading new media, whatever. And by default and by design, Windows 7 Basic and Windows 7 uh, starter, or, or excuse me, Windows 7 Starter and Windows 7 Home Premium don't allow you to do that. The first thing I'm going to show you uh, when I continue this video is going to be set up your 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 Linux home media server for remote administration, and then we'll get into file sharing, which can be challenging with. Uh, with Linux. And then finally, 
setting up XB, uh, finally downloading and setting up XBMC uh, to uh, actually be the, for lack of a better term, the the the, the media uh, demon that that a lot that will share your will, that will share that media across uh, your home network. So once okay. again, so stand by. Got Linux Mint installed up and running. Great. Now here's a few things that we're going to have to do to prep it to act as a server. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is change the IP address. That's fairly straightforward. So what you're going to do is uh, go to your applications menu, uh, go to settings, uh, network connections, Highlight wired connection, hit edit, go to your IPv4 settings. Now, choosing an IP address, uh, the numbers you see here don't use those numbers. These numbers are specific to my home network. Yours are going to be different. Uh, most routers' default network is uh, 198 or 192.168. 0 or 192.168.1 dot something okay I've set my home router up differently from the default uh, but a couple of principles apply you're gonna need to know the IP address of your home router that's your gateway okay uh, you're going to need to know uh, what the DHCP range is on your router so that you choose uh, so that you either adjust that range or you choose an address outside of that range so it your router doesn't assign your server IP address to uh, uh, to another device and you're going to need to know the network mask those have to match network match network mask gateway have to match your router okay DNS servers. You're going to separate these by commas as you can see here and uh, the first one you're going to put in will be your home router, the, address, the IP address to your home router. Uh, the next two you're probably going to get are going to be in your home router assigned by uh, your internet service provider. Uh, this uh, is a DNS server assigned by my uh, IPS or ISP and this last one 8.8.8.8 .8 I believe that is if memory serves that is Google's DNS server and yes it works so you'll hit save I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already got this done and what you're gonna want to do is, is restart your computer your Linux computer at this point this that's so you can ensure that all of the changes take place after you've restarted now we're gonna uninstall one piece of software and then we're gonna install two other pieces of software to take the place of the software we're uninstalling I'll explain it as I go along so go back to uh, applications menu settings uh, you're gonna scroll down uh, look for synaptic package manager go ahead and select that and put in your administrator password when it asks for it. The first thing you need to do is you're going to need to remove a piece of software that's installed by uh, default in Linux Mint and that piece of software is called Vino. What Vino is, it is a front end uh, to uh, VNC uh, remote desktop server. The reason why you need to get rid of this is the version of VNC that that comes with Vino is not compatible with uh, Microsoft's uh, remote desktop protocol client. So get rid of it. So you're going to mark that for uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to mark that for complete removal. Once you've done that go ahead and do a search for actually 
I recommend just so you don't get this confused, do these and do this in three separate steps. First, uninstall Vino. Okay, Vino is uninstalled. Next, you're going to install Tight VNC Server. It's all one word. So go ahead and do a search for Tight VNC Server. And there it is. We're going to highlight that. We're going to mark it for installation. Again, do this in three separate steps. Why? Because I know it works that way. Okay, next piece of software you're going to install. This is the last piece you'll need to uh, enable remote a remote session from uh, Windows Remote Desktop Protocol, and that is XRDP. Mark that one for installation. Apply. Apply. Now, while that's cooking, just a quick explanation. Tight VNC is uh, what uh, presents your Linux desktop to remote users. But Tight VNC doesn't talk to Microsoft's remote desktop protocol. That's what XRDP does. So, what XRDP does is it provides a remote logon service for uh, Windows remote desktop protocol and then passes that control and, and then passes uh, the tight VNC session through to uh, the Windows Remote Desktop Protocol. Is a quick and dirty how that works. Uh, somebody smarter and more articulate than I am can probably explain it better, but bottom line is that's what you need to make this work. Okay. Now that we've done that, we're, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to log off and log back in again, and that's going to start the services. And at this point, we're going to take. Okay, we've logged off, we've logged back in. Now we're back on our Windows machine, and we're going to uh, test uh, the remote desktop. Hit your orb. Go ahead and do a search for remote. There it is on top, remote desktop connection. It's already highlighted because I've tested this already. Uh, but you put in the IP address uh, to your uh, to your Linux box. Hit connect. Go ahead and hit OK or yes. Okay, there's a login window. Go ahead and put in your uh, credentials for your Linux box. Now the first time this comes up, desktop's going to look radically different from the default install. I've change some things around. What you're going to see is going to be a little tad bit different from this. What you're going to get is like the base default XFCE desktop. Don't worry about it. You're still logged into the computer with your uh, administrative credentials. Uh, it's just a different session. Now basically what's going on is there's two simultaneous sessions going on on your Linux machine, one local, one remote. And uh, and actually those those two sessions don't see each other uh, but you can still do pretty much everything from the remote that you can do on the desktop with a few exceptions uh, 
but the main thing uh, the main thing you can do is administrative tasks like uh, like updating uh, like updating software uh, you can uh, manage your shares remotely uh, you can uh, ba just about everything uh, and then all it, uh, and the things you can't do that you need to physically do on on, on the box uh, I will I will show you that unfortunately one of those things is administrating uh, XBMC uh, because uh, you can't do that remotely because of the uh, because of the OpenGL drivers uh, that don't work uh, through remote desktop connection, so that you do physically have to be on the hardware. But that's not diff uh, that's not a, a big deal. Okay, so that's part one of the video. Uh, showed you what it can do. Uh, uh, taking some. I've showed you how to set up uh, your desktop so that you can uh, your your Linux Mint machine so that you can re uh, administratively so that you can remotely administrate it. And uh, in part two, uh, and it's going to be kind of involved. I'm going to show you how to set up uh, shares on your Linux machine that you can see from uh, your Windows network. So that's the end of part one. Uh, Thanks for watching.